and uh, been to Germany a couple of times now this year. And uh, it is weird that you accidentally realise you have preconceptions of a place, you know, without even realising it. And you, I turn up there, and I've been, I was at Dusseldorf and a couple of other places, and it's, you know, it, it's just like any other city. There's different people with, you know, different colours and creeds and backgrounds, and, you know, lots of, lots of, you know, lots of Turkish immigrants, so Muslimomania is kicking it off. And the kebab shops open at fucking nine in the morning. I thought I'd died and gone to fucking heaven. I could have moved there on that basis. You'll be pleased to know that there were there, there's fundamental things about Germany that you learn that do reinforce and validate the stereotypes and your preconceived notions of what they're all like. Mainly it's to do, the thing that they, is very Germanic is the sort of adherence to all forms of order. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. There was a toilet sign. There was a sign in a toilet that I went to. Uh, the men's toilets, obviously, I'm not a perv. Right? But there was a sign in the toilet, and it was one of those don't do this signs. It's like a red circle with a red line going through it. And the symbol underneath the red line was a guy standing and urinating into the toilet. Not on the urinal, but in an actual toilet. And I thought, is this telling you not to piss in, uh, in, into the bowl? Like, use the urinal. And I thought, well, how would you re reinforce that? And I was informed by, you know, by, by, I was told that that sign actually means... You're allowed to piss in the toilet, but you're not allowed to pee standing up. And I'm like, if that was Britain, we'd just sit there. We'd deli we'd, like, if it was Britain or America, you'd just take a shit on the floor just out of you know, some sort of belligerent childishness. But it's, it, it's, you know, it, it sounds weird, but this is the German way. If there's a sign up there for something, they will follow it. There was a sign at a train station, uh, Duisburg train station. I was staying with, with, with someone in Duisburg. Which, you know, it's just close enough to douchebag to make it amusing for me. But there was a train sign, and this sign, literally all it said was, please do not remove this sign. That's how fucking hard on the Germans have got for the fucking sign. Right? And also, the other thing is, when you cross the road, they obviously have the little, like, the, like the green man for crossing, and the red one for, stop, for not crossing. And they do not fucking, like, it, I'm used to the idea, like, if nothing's coming... If you know there's nothing up, just cross the fucking road. But not in Germany. Like, you could be standing on... You could be standing... There could be 5,000 miles of deserted road after a nuclear apocalypse, right? They will not cross the fucking road until the little green man is come on, right? So, you know, I think, really, if anything we can take from this, is that whilst it's a bit odd, if you're worried about World War Three kicking off again and them not trying it one more time, all we have to do is put fucking you know crosswalk signs on the borders, set them to fucking red. They'll never get over it, you know. And uh, but I was in Germany and uh, I decided to do what any patriotic Englishman would do once his team has been knocked out of the World Cup. I jumped ship as quick as a flash, changed my allegiance, and I supported Germany. And before anyone gets all like, oh, nationalistic -y, screaming traitor whilst punching your wife, right? Let me, let me just make this clear. You know, I'm an English sports fan. And the one thing you've got to learn about being an English sports fan is there, there is no other country you can support without there being some problematic. One of the funniest things I, I've, I hear whenever England are about to play in anything is you'll hear the sports, you'll hear the commentator say in an intro, they'll say, today England take on the old enemy, the old rival. And I'm sat there thinking, right, so that means we're either facing Germany, or France, or Argentina, Scotland, Spain, Australia, America, Wales, Northern Ireland, Russia, Colombia, Greece, Poland, China, Italy, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Guam, or anyone in Africa, or Asia, or outer space. This is going to be fucking epic. Because we have we pissed everyone off, didn't we? You know, we owned everything at one point. You know? And, you know, it's just, we're good at marketing. Right? But the, um... My favourite story that came out of the uh, World Cup was, um... There was this guy in... The headline, and I'll link... Again, all links to stuff will be in the, in the available areas, wherever the fuck that is. Uh, this was an article on the Daily Coast. It was quite interesting. Uh, priest, colon... Uh, colon as in the gram, not priest's colon. Priest, World Cup is a homosexual abomination because players wear gay shoes. I am not making this up. This is a, a guy who's a Russian Orthodox priest. How much do you want to party with this guy? I don't know why people put the word Orthodox. It's like, how often do you hear people describe themselves as unorthodox? Like, I'm a Jew, I'm an unorthodox Jew. 
What does that mean? Oh, basically, I just I wear trousers made out of crisps. I you know I I do forward rolls everywhere. I you know I have to have an ear of corn sticking out of my fucking mouth. I don't know what it means, right? But a Russian Orthodox priest claimed the World Cup is an abomination because players wear brightly coloured shoes. Writing in his column, I bet he did, on the Russian people's line, whatever the fuck that is, priest Alexander Shumsky claimed that players are promoting a gay rainbow by wearing green, pink, yellow and blue shoes. Now, I don't know what a gay rainbow is. I know that the rainbow is a symbol of gay pride, but it doesn't mean that all rainbows are gay. Or, however, ironically, they are all bent. But he's got the colours wrong. I mean, doesn't I don't know what goes on in Russia. I know it's a different place, but maybe there's something in a fucking atmosphere or whatever. Some backdraft from Chernobyl has fucking changed all the colours. But this is not the rainbow song that you sing at school. Red and yellow and pink and green. Blah, 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 blah. You know, this is not the it. This is not the one. He went on to say, the liberal ideology of globalism clearly wants to oppose Christianity with football. I'm sure of it. Well, that'll do for me. Right? I mean, he's got us there, hasn't he? I mean, you know, the, the liberal ideology is being promoted by... I mean, because if there's one place on earth where, I, you know, you can guarantee... I am going to be... I can guarantee you that you will be fully immersed in a sea of, P, of PC, you know of politically correct, liberal tolerance. It is at the stands of a football ground. I've been, I remember going to football in the old days, I've been to a football field, I remember going to see England and Turkey, we were doing all the liberal football chants going, you know, are we equal, are we equal, are we really all the same, yes we are, we're just different colours, all of those ones, I remember that, you know, it was, it was brilliant, it was just a really, you you know, you know, Let's hear it for Marxism. You know, just fantastically, you know, tolerant. And, um, we, you know, it was great. What a fucking knob, right? It's <laughs> the whole point of football, being at a football match. It's just 90 minutes of just letting it all out. No, no rule. Get it out of your system. He then went on to say, Therefore I am glad that the Russian players have failed and by the grace of God no longer participate in this homosexual abomination. It's... Uh, it's, it's, so basically what he's saying is that, is that God made the Russian players crap so that they wouldn't have to risk, what, for getting violently raped in the ears by the Algerian defence? If they, th- I'm pretty sure that's worthy of a free kick, right, no matter how gay the ref is. I wonder what he thinks when he hears things like, you know, oh, he's, attacked, he's been heavily tackled there. Oh, that was a savage beating. And it's, you know, back of the net. I don't know, what does he think all these things mean? This is, this is the weirdest one. The priest also criticised the quote-unquote unthinkable hairstyles of the, play, of the players in the tour. Now, what the fuck is an unthinkable hairstyle? Well, this is, an, this is a hairstyle that is, you know, human beings are incapable of, of, of being able to conceive. It's like, you know, is this an ontological barber this guy goes to? Good evening, sir. How would you like your hair done? I'd like my hair to be styled into the metaphysical concept of ennui, please. What the friggin' hell is this bollocks, right? Now, I'm not an expert on things like football boots or haircuts. As you can tell, you know, and that, you know, particularly haircuts that are beyond my imagination, right? But if there's one thing that, I, that I'm pretty sure is guaranteed that is going to make any man look a little bit, or say, look like a massive fucking fruit... It's a guy who goes out of his way to write a column or an article bitching about other men's shoes and hair. How gay is that? How, lo- how long is it? OK, let's just make bets now. How long is it before this guy is found absolutely off his tits on poppers, dressed as a, a nun with his dick deep inside a 17-year-old Filipino rent boy's fucking ear? What is it? I, you can just picture him, can't you, right in the blog going, Oh my fucking God, oh, look at all those dreadful boots there. Oh, they're disgusting. Look at them on those sexy toned legs of those athletes. Oh, they, he actually said they might as well be wearing bra and panties. I bet he fucking wishes they were. Hmm, yeah, oh God, I'm the, I tell you what, they should have just worn bra. Oh yeah, they could. Ooh, look at that guy's hair. No, no, don't come now. Abort the mission. Abort. Ab- no, don't abort. I'm pro-life. Oh, fuck. Oh, oh, we lost. Russia lost. Good. It's a fucking disgrace. When they get back, they should all be punished really naughtily. Right. 